Well, the Sal Institute won back-to-back -back Super Bowls in 08 and 09, and Al Rapp's championship teams had a guy named Jake Miter starring as a defensive back. Miter then went on to play in college at Castleton State, but post-college, the Troy native is pursuing his first love, skeleton, which for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the sport, it's like luge, but on your stomach, head first. The 24-year-old is hoping to make the USA Olympic team in a few years. Before that, he hopes to have a solid season this winter on an international circuit. But this summer, he's been practicing his starts at the U.S. Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid. In fact, two weeks ago, Miter won the USA National Skeleton Push Championship. And I'm joined by Jake Miter. We're inside the U.S. Bobsled and Skeleton offices, which is in the Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid. First of all, thanks for inviting us up. Thanks for having me. Your national champion in push cart, which uh, just wrapped up recently. Uh, you're a skeleton pilot driver. How do you refer to that? Uh, I just say athlete. You're a skeleton athlete. Um, and so people obviously associate skeleton with the ice and, and the, the, the Olympics, which has a lot to do with it. But then cold. You, you, in the cold, but it isn't cold 12 months out of the year. Yeah. So push cart is what you do in the summer. Explain that. Um, we have a, a wheeled push track here. It's, uh, it's about... Well, we timed about 40 meters of it. Um, it's somewhat identical to pushing on the ice. It's not, it doesn't translate exactly, but it, it's the best thing that we can do in the summer to uh, prepare for the winter. How important is the championship to you? Because I know it's not like an Olympic medal, but still the best in the country come and compete in this, right? Um, for the most part. I mean, our top slider, Matt Antoine, wasn't here, but uh, most everybody else was. Um, I mean, once we get on ice, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. But it lets me know that what we did all summer worked, the, uh, the lifting, the sprinting, the pushing. It's all getting ready for, uh, for the winter. And um, I mean, we're, it lets me know that all the work we put in is going in the right direction, moving in the right direction. So it's a confidence boost, but next week when we get on ice, it, it's gone. It, it, it's right, over. and it's all pointing towards the skeleton competitions. Uh, trying to qualify to be a part of the World Cup circuit representing Team USA. But before we get into that, let's rewind to how your skeleton career began. How old were you when you tried it for the first time? When I tried skeleton, skeleton for the first time, I was 16. When I tried bobsled, I was 10. I would started in the junior bobsled program here. And uh, you know, I just wasn't going to be big enough to be a bobsledder. So I gave <laughs> skeleton a try, and uh, I liked it even more. And uh, I did it on and off for a couple of years. I took a whole year off. and. Uh, Decided after my junior year of college that I missed it. I wanted to come back, so uh, I finished school and been here ever since, going into my third full season. Uh, skeleton scares a lot of people. Maybe just watching it on TV, let alone actually trying it. Was there any fear for you at first? Uh, yeah, of course, there was fear at first. But uh, you actually realize that of the three sliding sports, Bob Solution, Skeleton, Skeleton is the safest. We have the lower center of gravity, so we're less likely to flip. So, I mean, I mean, there's always an element of fear. I don't think it'll ever go away, but it definitely gets easier as time goes on. You ever been involved in a bad wreck? I've only completely come off my sled once. That was here in my first team trials race. How scary was it? Uh, you know, it wasn't that bad. I just yeah. kind of uh -huh. came off my sled. I, I hung, got hung up on a wall and the, the curve ended and yeah. <laughs> I was still too high. So I, I came down and just lost the sled and I just kind of rolled around on the ice until I came to a stop. Uh -huh. Now, the allure of skeleton for you was because you realized you'd have a future in bobsled, at Not least at the, but maybe at the highest level. Was that the concern? Um, no. Um, I mean, if I really wanted to say good bobsled, I would have tried it. Uh -huh. I would have tried to put on that weight, but it probably wasn't going to happen. Gotcha. I don't have the right body type. But uh, you know, the first time I tried skeleton, I, I just wanted to try it. You know what it was like, uh -huh. and I knew right away that, you know, you get the push and you have to drive and Bob said only the driver is really you know, yeah. has control of the sled. Everybody else is just there right. for the ride. And I wanted to be a part of the whole thing. Sure. So uh, I really like that that part of it where you kinda have to be one with the sled and uh -huh. not to get too uh, foo foo into it. But uh, yeah. there's a different mindset that skeleton athletes have. What was the allure to sledding at all in the first place? I don't know, I guess I was attracted to the speed and mm -hmm. it was just something different, something like uh, a challenge, I guess. Uh -huh. so, I, don't, I don't know what it was that really turned me on to it, but I was always somewhat attracted to, to bobsled and, and skeleton. And I remember watching the 1998 Olympics and just wanted to give it a try. I wanted to see what it's like to feel that, that speed and those G-forces. And eventually I got the chance. I'm pretty lucky that I got the chance. 
uh, now that you're doing it, the goal is to be a champion. Um, and, and to do that, you've got to go through the USA trials before you can compete on the World Cup circuit. Is that right? Yep. And what are those? Uh, October 26th and 27th, we race here. And then we go out to Park City, Utah. And I believe the races are November 7th and 8th out there. Okay, so two races over two cities, and then the top two athletes from Team USA would get that opportunity? Yep, they go to the compete. World Cup circuit. And then the next three will go to the Intercontinental Cup circuit. The next two will go to Europa Cup, and the next three or four will go to America's Cup. So to be able to compete for world championships, you need to be in the top two at the USA Trials first. What do you think your chances are of, of accomplishing that? I'm not looking to go on World Cup just yet. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of, I guess, a pipe dream for this, this season. Uh -huh. I still have a lot of learning to do. Uh -huh. Driving a sled takes a, a long time to, to learn how to do and learn how to be fast. Um, even if I won push champs, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to translate to ice right away. I have to take my time, and this is a, a process, and I'm willing to put the, the years into it to get to that World Cup level. But just yet, I just want to get races under my belt. It doesn't matter what circuit it is. Gotcha. And so to, to qualify to any circuit, you need to be top what? Um, top 11 in team trials. Top 11 at team trials. All right. Um, well, obviously for you, it started years ago with that first time you ever jumped onto a sled. I'm curious as to what that feels like. So do you think you could take me out and show me? Yeah, sure. Let's go. So there's no ice yet. There are no turns. Does that mean there's no imminent danger when it comes to the push track? As long as you are pretty good on your feet and you don't trip and fall, you should be fine. <laughs> That's asking an awful lot. <laughs> what are some things that I'm going to want to keep in mind when I'm doing this? Um, get your arm out in front of you. Uh, Try to uh, stay with the sled. Don't let it get too far out front or too far behind you. Uh -huh. um, when you load, keep your head up so you don't hit the ground. Good advice. Uh, Maureen is more of a bobsledder. You're standing in front of a nice red one here in the back. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you ever went down a bobsled run? Yes, and it was terrifying. <laughs> um, I, like before I slid, like before I slid, everyone was telling me like Lake Placid is like the most scariest track ever. So I was thinking. Going into it, that I'm just gonna die. So um, <laughs> that's okay. exactly what I want to be doing right now. Because um, I'm terrified right now, and I'm not gonna climb into a bobsled. Should I be worried about this? Oh no, you're fine with this. Just uh, stick with the sled. <laughs> <laughs> so I start running. Yep. And then what? You want to swing your outside arm just like you're running on the normal. Yeah. Try to grab your knees out in front of you so you hit your chest. Yep. Yeah. And then you're gonna. Bring your left hand on the saddle. Here, behind, okay. Put your right hand over here. Yep. And chest down. Gotcha, and then I go. Do you like say anything before you go? Like, I don't count. Know if you want to, you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing I might say is a prayer. Okay. My time wasn't going to win a push guard championship, although Chris knew a thing or two about winning a push guard championship. The women's champion, uh, what did you think of my run there? Um, you know, it was not too bad for the first time. A little bit rough, but everybody uh, has to start from somewhere. So, <laughs> nope, not too bad. <laughs> what advice would you give me for next time if there is a next time? A little bit softer, <laughs> landing into the sled. Um, keeps it going forward in the right direction, but, you know, like I said, not too bad for the first time. 4-2 was the time we were shooting for, missed it by about two and a half seconds. Where did it all go wrong? Uh, it looked like he kicked the sled. And, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, I guess you just lost, lost grip of the sled. <laughs> it didn't look fun what you did. That, <laughs> that's wasn't. not really the fastest way to get down the hill. Uh, <laughs> maybe if you take a couple another try and uh -huh. you can see if you get better. But yeah. What about the start? Did you think I was generating some okay speed for a beginner? Not really, no. <laughs> so there was nothing about it that was good. Well, it? it wasn't free. <laughs> well, I'll continue to practice, or maybe I won't, and that's okay, too. It's also good to know my limitations. Um, but for you, what was that first one like? Do you remember that first time down the mountain on, on the skeleton? Uh, yeah, I was pretty nervous. Uh -huh. um, luckily, one of the, our top sliders at the time was, was there to kind of walk me through what to do. Mm -hmm. He just said, take a couple steps and get on. Don't worry about being fast right away. And yeah. just. Uh, Enjoy the ride. Don't try to yeah. do anything. If you, yeah. if you try to do stuff, you're probably going right. to end up in more trouble than uh, if you just lay there and right. take a couple of hits. But you'll, you'll get down if you just 
Just relax. I know that you said you aren't putting too much pressure on yourself to be on the World Cup circuit right away. With that being said, three years from now, the next uh, Winter Olympics, do you think you could be one of the top two Americans? The goal is, is to be in the mix, for mm -hmm. sure. You know, I, I would love to be there, and I'm going to do everything I can to be there. I'm not going to guarantee that I'll be there, mm -hmm. but uh, that is the goal, and that's, that's why I'm here. I mean, we train at the Olympic Training Center every day, so it's mm -hmm. hard not to, uh, not to have that somewhere in the back of your mind that the Olympics are coming up in a couple of years, but you know, we have to race this season and uh, Team Trials is the only thing that matters right now. Yeah. How much do you put into this day in and day out? Um, usually four to six hours a day. I'm here. So this is essentially full time. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a full time job. Yeah. With little pay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why make that commitment to do that? Uh, it just sounds a lot more fun than sitting in an office. So, I mean, I might not have a lot of money right now, but I'm having a lot of fun. and. I'd rather have fun than uh, maybe be financially secure. Awesome. Well, we'll follow your career and best of luck at trials, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the Olympics in a few years. Hopefully. All right. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. And as Jake just mentioned, he's pursuing this dream full time. So if you're so inclined, he could use some help through donations to find him on Facebook. It's Jake Miter, USA Miter is M-I-T-E-R. Now, I, I, don't want, I do want to show you one more picture from Lake Placid this afternoon. This is my left shoe. It got caught on the sled as I went to load. I'm not making an excuse. Yes, I am actually making an excuse, but I wanted to be clear about it because I had to explain why I look so unbelievably uncoordinated in my push debut. Probably my last time doing it anyways. All right, moving on. There was a major upset in Division Three football over the weekend, and a former Shenandoah star was right in the middle of it. That story is next on The Edge.